Let's continue the financial revolution in today's teaching, Wealth by the Holy Spirit, now on Fixing the Money Thing. Write this down. Your answer is hidden from you for you. This is what I've said for years. This is a key, a key principle. Your answer is hidden from you for you. Okay? Now, obviously, back in the garden, it wasn't that way. But, but since the earth curse system has taken place, your answer is hidden. And it's hidden from you, but it's hidden for you. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Can we put that on the screen up here? The kingdom of heaven is like what? Catch this. What is it like? Oh, yeah, people like the lottery. They like all these things. i got to find treasure, treasure, treasure. Treasure can be anything you need. Anything. The kingdom of heaven is where at? Luke 17, the kingdom of God does not come by observation, for it is in us. So you have treasure. The kingdom of heaven in you is like treasure, but it is, it is hidden. The treasure is hidden in a field. When a man finds it, he hides it again, and then in his joy went and sells all he has and buys the field. What's this talking about? Meaning the, the field, if we go back to the parable of the sower, Jesus said the field is the heart of man or the, the spiritual part of, of man. In this kingdom that is in you, there is everything you have need of. Everything. Every answer, every time you need to know where that earring you lost is at, when you need a job, you need direction, you need an idea, it's all in God is the most creative. He created everything. I mean, he knows everything. Would you agree he knows everything? I think he knows everything. And so he has the ability to speak to you and bring revelation. When a man hears it, the Bible says when a man hears the revelation, there's always a process of occupation, meaning that once you hear it, you're not in that moment at the right place to actually capture it. Many times uh, he'll give a direction that you have to change direction, you have to sell something, you have to get some education, you, but he'll give you the revelation. This is your answer. This is where I want you to go to. In that process, there's a process of pre preparation, a process of education. There's a process of some things. You have to position yourself with the ability to capture the revelation he gave you. Does that make sense? And so a man goes and he sells everything. In other words, he postures himself with the ability to actually capture and occupy what God told him. All right, so it's a process. You hear it first, it leads your direction, it sets your course, sets your path until you can actually capture and occupy what he said. But it's treasure to you. I need an answer, God. Here's your direction. Peter, go catch a fish. His answer was not at that moment. He had to prepare with one line at the lake and catch the first fish, etc. Very, very, very specific details. Your answer from the Holy Spirit will be very specific details. And you'll get those as you prepare, as you, that's what I'm to do. Okay, that's a great idea. That's a Holy Spirit thing. Then you're going to have to begin to do your part and walk that out until you're able to capture that revelation. But God, the revelation he has given you is your answer. In that place, that, that revelation, you'll find your, your answer. We started the business. We had to learn how to do the business. But as the business grew, it became our answer. It delivered us from debt. It's enabled us to give millions to the gospel. It's changed our entire life. But yet we had to raise that idea. We had to, we had to walk with that idea. We had to solve the questions. We go, I never did this before. How do I do that? But when God gave me the revelation of that business, it was my answer. And when I figured out how it worked, I captured, or I say occupied it. When I began to occupy it, it produced what God had said. So in the Holy Spirit, we find these things. I like this scripture, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 3. I will give you the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places. Riches stored in secret places. Why the, why the first fish? Hey, Peter, go catch a fish. Take the first fish. Why the first fish? You ever thought about that? I believe there's a very specific reason why we say the first fish. And I'll talk about that here in a minute. But I believe that when we see the first fish, so does Satan. 
when we begin to see the plan of God, Satan sees it as well. And so I'll talk more about how we posture ourselves. You know, one of the protection God has for us is that he gives us glimpses and visions of our future, not our entire future. You know, he said, I wish God would tell me. No, you don't. You know why? You'd probably blab it. And the enemy would pick up on it. And he would change tactics to intercept that plan and cause frustration. You probably would quit. No, God doesn't do that. People say, well, you know, why does God always wait to the midnight hour? You better thank God he does. You don't need it to the midnight hour, right? He's wise enough to know until your maturity is able to occupy a direction, he's not going to give it all to you. He's going to give you just enough to keep you moving that direction until you mature enough where the opportunity intersects your maturity, and that's called destiny. He's going to keep you moving that way with little glimpses, good things, the midnight hour. Don't tip your hand. Remember Zechariah, John the Baptist's dad, in there in the temple, you know, the, uh, when the angel came, remember? High priest, he was the high priest uh, at that time, I think, and the angel showed up in the Holy of Holies and said he's going to have John the Baptist as a son. He didn't believe it. What happened to him? The angel shut his mouth. Why? Because he could tip the hand. He had the ability to mess it up with his words, and the angel, okay, you're not going to speak to this guy's born. We can't trust you. Okay, so glimpses and visions how God leads us. Why did Jesus speak in parables? John, uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 8. When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what a parable meant. And he said this, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to others I speak in parables, so that those seeing, they may not see. This is powerful. The Bible says that the secrets, the things that God knows, are legally yours. It's family business. You're part of the family. You know, this is family business. There's no secrets in the family. God wants you to have this knowledge. So the secrets of the, 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 secrets of the kingdom of God, the, the secrets of, of the kingdom of heaven, what heaven knows, you are to have access to. Who would not be able to win if they had the answers before the test? Are you with me? Okay, but you've got to learn, how do I tap into this? How, Pastor, how do I hear these things we want to talk about? So why is it hidden? Because evil people, wrong motives, tipping our hand to Satan. God works through strategy. Remember, the earth realm is, is, is headed up by uh, men and women. And when Adam lost the kingdom, he gave it away. Uh, you know, Satan claims this place, Luke chapter 4, when he was tempting Jesus. He said, bow down and worship me, and I'll give you all the authority and the splendor of the kingdoms of the earth, for it has been given to me. Who gave it to him? But Adam had it, gave it to him. So God now works undercover. Follow me? Think of a military strategy. God works through unique strategies. Underneath the obvious. Satan is in the kingdom of darkness. He only reacts. He does not know. But he does react. And so here's why Jesus speaks in parables. Satan will change strategies. Okay? Satan will watch. He'll he'll change strategies against your life. Uh, When he sees things begin to change, an anointing change, a direction change, he perks up. He looks. He goes, what's this? He's going to. So I submit this to you. I believe it was the first fish because if it had been the 50th fish, he's going to go, wait a minute. This is one of Jesus' disciples. He's down here catching fish. That's weird. I mean, yeah, okay, he's fish. Peter's a fisherman. That's, 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 that's not hard. Yeah, he's, okay, that's probably normal. He fishes. What, what's he doing? He, what's he putting his hand down on all those fish for? I've never seen him do that before. He's putting his hand down on their, each one of their mouths. He's looking for something. What is this all about? You see, I submit, this is my personal, personal idea, that the first fish was so that Satan had no time to think what was going on Wait a minute, he wants a fish. Have a kid throw a rock in the, in the lake. Get these fish scattered out of here. He's trying to find something. I believe, I'm just my personal, that's just my personal, personal thought. But I think you can bear it out. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we find uh, some insight in how we receive revelation from the kingdom. Remember, the double portion is dependent upon revelation. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 7. We find these words. We speak of God's, Paul speaking here, we speak of God's what kind of wisdom? Secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began, speaking of Jesus Christ. 
None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, please underline this in your Bible. This is a key principle. If they had, what would have happened? They would not have crucified Jesus. Satan would have changed his tactics. Yeah. That's still happening today. Not just with Jesus. If Satan can pick up on the plan that God has for you, the place of occupation, the destiny, because in God's kingdom, you are called to take territory. He claims it all, all of his. He thinks it's all his. He's going to defend that position. And if he picks up on that, he's going to change tactics to pull you off track. So God uses the foolish to confound the wise. Right? He catches Satan off guard by doing things that, what? Right. You're going to use Gary Cassie to help people get out of debt. Right. Yeah, he's been in nine years. Man. He's already on antidepressants. Right. It's like, you're going to use him? Yeah. <laughs> He's going to use the weak to confound the strong. He's going to use the foolish to confound the wise so that his wisdom is what is seen. Amen, Amen for that. It's awesome. So he goes on in verse number 9. So as it is written, Satan will change tactics, but as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. So this is a very, very key principle. Your answer, you've never thought it. Probably your answer, you've never seen it. Probably your answer, you've never heard it. Because if you had, you probably would have already done it. And you haven't. And if you had, you probably didn't listen to it because you're filtering it through, I can do that mentality of the earth curse system. Next time on Fixing the Money Thing. Understand this. This is vital. Don't misunderstand conflict. Just because there's conflict does not mean you've missed God. God gets the glory and you get the paycheck. God leads you into the battles, not to harm you, but for you to win, demonstrate his glory, his name, and for the spoils of battle to go into your life and to affect the kingdom financially. Join us for more financial revolution next time on Fixing the Money Thing.